if your stock brakes can clamp hard enough to do this, then what is the point of big brakes? So today, we're gonna to be installing this big brake kit on the Miata, and along the way, we'll talk about what a big brake kit is even about and whether or not they're worth it. In most cases, probably not gonna be worth it, but we'll talk about that later. I'm Zach, this is Money Pit, let's slow down. Four million subs. Thank you guys so much. Whether it's showing up in the comments or the subreddit or on social media. It means the world seeing you guys take part in our community. To celebrate this monumentous occasion and to say thank you to you guys, we have made this commemorative four million sub sticker. It's not for people who come for five, it's for you guys, the fantastic four million. And we're only gonna make as many as we sell, so they're never going to make it again. Once they're done, they're done. This bad guy is proof that you are here right now. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, donut is only donut because of people like you, and I can't thank you enough. <laughs> One more time. Now go buy a sticker, man. He's hurting, boys and girls. I slept weird. Taking me out of commission. Look, I know you all want an excuse to get big breaks, and I know you probably got a little scared when I said that they might not be worth it, but you know, we gotta talk about it. And then eventually we'll talk about when they are worth it, because obviously sometimes they are. So your OEM brakes are designed to stop your car during normal driving without making any noise, without making too much dust, while lasting a long time, and well, costing relatively little to produce. So that's just to say that they're not very fancy. It's not to say that they're not powerful because basically all of you with a working vehicle could go get in it right now, go down the road, slam on the brakes and lock up your front tires, which means that they're powerful enough. So then the question is, why do they feel so bad? And the answer is, there could be a lot of answers. Could be as simple as having some air in your lines and you need to bleed out the air. Your fluid could just be old as well. Brake fluid's hygroscopic, which means it absorbs water and water makes terrible brake fluid. So after a while, your brake fluid absorbs enough water that it needs to be changed. You should change it once a year. So if you haven't done that, do it and use a good brake fluid. One that uh, meets your OEM specs or potentially exceeds. And probably most importantly, your brake pads. Different pads will have different characteristics, which means your brakes will feel differently depending on which kind of brake pad you're running. Let me show you what we're gonna be running in our new kit. So these are the pads that we selected to run with the kit that we're installing on the Miata. These are a semi-metallic kind of pad, and that generally means that there's about 30 to 65% of the pad's compound is metal, and the rest is whatever they use to bind the metal together. There are also organic pads, uh, but those tend to wear out a lot quicker and make dust and noise. And then there are also what are probably overall the best pads, which are ceramics. Uh, they're great at dealing with heat. They're not very noisy. They last forever, although they are a little bit more expensive. So, Willwood's got this nice BP-10 compound. That's what we're gonna be normally running on the Miata, and then when we do a heavy track day, we'll swap in some track pads. We should take a look at Willwood's website so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see what you would look at if you were shopping for pads. Okay, so here we've got the page for the pad that we've got here, and the peak temperature rating is eight to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we've got some specs, and then we've got performance characteristics. Medium friction, a smooth engagement, low abrasion on iron rotors, so that means that it's not just gonna chew through your rotors. So it sounds like a pretty tame, dailyable pad that isn't gonna crush through our rotors and isn't gonna be noisy or hard to get up to temperature. It has great friction at low temperatures, and it starts to fall off around 900 degrees. The issue can be that a pad that can deal with higher temperatures sometimes isn't as effective at lower temperatures. So that's one of the reasons you won't run the most aggressive pad you can because sometimes you gotta get those pads up to temperature. And it can be scary if you press the brake pedal as soon as you get in the car and not that much happens. So this is a good temperature range for our daily brake pad. Uh, and then we'll probably wanna step up to one of these pads that allows us to get a little hotter for our track pad. So if you're shopping for pads, spend some time on a page like this, do some reading, understand what the differences are, and understand what you need, and you'll have a selection in no time. 
So our brake rotor upgrade is this Willwood two-piece rotor that came in the kit from Flying Miata because it was the best rotor they could find. So these rotors are a two-piece. I still have to put them together and that's great because obviously we get the strong iron ring, but then we get to save some weight by using aluminum for the center. So I'll put these together and they should look pretty awesome too. Now let's talk about the design because there are some different rotor designs. If you're out there shopping, you've probably seen cross-drilled and slotted rotors. Drilled rotors aim to increase cooling of the rotor by increasing airflow. And they can look cool and they can do their job in terms of cooling. The problem is in practice, most drilled brake rotors that I see in real life end up cracking. I'm not a big fan of drilled rotors, uh, but if you're gonna go with drilled rotors, you gotta spend the big bucks and get the good stuff. Now, slotted rotors don't really come with any downsides, but their job is a little bit different. They don't intend to cool the rotor, they intend to basically clean the brake pad. So these slots wipe clean the, uh, the surface of the brake pad from any debris, any gas, any dust, any buildup to try to keep the pad to rotor contact pure and clean and keep your brakes as good as they can possibly be. But neither of those things are too terribly important, drilled or slotted rotors. The real important part is that you get a nice quality material that can withstand your brake pads and won't warp. All right, so let's say you've done all these things. You've done braided stainless brake lines. You've done really nice pads and rotors. Well, your brakes probably feel pretty good. However, if you're really out there driving, you're doing hard track days, road racing, or really pushing it in the canyons and pushing a lot of heat into your brakes, that still might not be enough. You still might be overheating your brakes. And that's really what it all boils down to. So that's why I got all of this. So I got a four wheel big brake kit from Flying Miata and I am psyched. This thing is gonna be sick. It's got Willwood calipers at all four corners and of course they're red, so they're gonna look awesome. Also got some anodized purple brackets. I love purple anodized stuff. That's just a fact. So we've got our red calipers, our purple brackets. We got two piece rotors. We got some nice daily pads. We got stainless lines. And we even have a brake proportioning valve so I can control how much power goes to the front and to the rear respectively in terms of braking. Honestly, this is just gonna be fantastic. Uh, okay, this is the other thing. Big brakes, even if you don't need them, <laughs> are sweet. You know when you see a car with a big brake kit, you know that guy knows what's up. So hopefully these big fat rotors and uh, pretty sweet pads will keep us from ever experiencing brake pad fade. Good Lord, I feel like I've been talking all morning. Why don't we just go over there and start installing some stuff? Anytime you're getting new rotors, whether they're performance rotors or just OEM replacements, they'll be shipped with a light coating of oil on them to keep them from corroding. You gotta clean that off. So as you can see, the new brakes aren't way bigger and honestly, they feel like they weigh about the same uh, because this is a two piece with aluminum. The point of this is that you don't wanna add a bunch of unsprung weight to your car. Uh, that can just make it handle a lot worse make it accelerate slower, and make it feel a lot worse. And that's not what we want for the Miata, obviously, so I want to compromise. I want the best of both worlds. I want a lot of braking, I want a lot of heat capacity in my brakes, but I don't want them to weigh a bunch. So that's why this is such a good kit. It's the right size. It's not overkill, it's the correct kill, you know what I mean? Got our little spacer here. All right, the caliper bracket fits, everything looks good. There's no clearance issues or anything like that. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put some Loctite on the bolts, put them back in, tighten them down, and we'll put the rotor and caliper in place, hook the line up, and then this corner is pretty much done, aside from bleeding, but that's later. Let's go get a caliper. All right, we're ready to put our caliper on. I've got my hardware here. The most important thing here is the use of the included shims. So the idea is that when we mount the caliper, we wanna make sure that the caliper in this way is centered, that the rotor is centered inside the caliper. Uh, so it's recommended to start with two shims, but you always gotta check and go from there. Make sure you got it right. So we'll measure and make sure this thing's nice and centered up. Ooh, it looks pretty <laughs> centered. Ah! I was saying it looks pretty centered. I've got this casting line on this spacer in the caliper that I can just kind of line up with the center of the rotor and it looks like it falls dead on it. I mean, I'll measure it anyway just to be sure, but by my eyeball, we're in good shape. 
So we've got a nice new stainless braided brake lines. They're awesome. They won't flex under pressure and uh, they should last a long time as long as we route them right. When you do install a set of these, you have to make sure that they don't rub anything throughout the steering swing or throughout the suspension travel. If these are rubbing, they will cut through. So make sure they're not rubbing on anything. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop our new pads into these rotors. And in doing so, I'll show you how easy it is to change pads on these. So you can see just how realistic it is to actually have track day pads and even weekend pads, you know, Tuesday pads, whatever it is. Put a little bit of grease on the back of my pads where the pistons hit them, just to make sure things stay nice and quiet. Okay, pads just gonna drop down in like a so. Obviously friction material facing the rotor on both sides. <laughs> that looks good. And uh, another thing to look for is your like wheel weights. If you have stick on wheel weights, sometimes those can clip your uh, caliper, so give it a spin. Uh, ours are close, but not that close. That's gonna be just fine in terms of our caliper. Now I'm gonna get under there and look at our brake line. Sometimes your rotors will be kind of corroded in place. When that's the case, big hammer will be your friend. But before you go slamming a hammer on a car that's on jack stands, you gotta make sure it's nicely supported. Hey. Everything on the rear is pretty much the same as the front, although some of it looks a little different, but we're just taking off the calipers, taking off the rotor. We're gonna move the heat shield. We do have to trim this heat shield a little bit to clear our new brackets. Although we are gonna have to install parking brakes, that'll be different, but we haven't gotten there yet. So our brake rotors on the rear, you see, are solid. And usually the rear brakes do a lot less of the work on a car than the front brakes. And on the Miata, that's especially true. Uh, people say that the rear brakes basically do nothing. And that's a big reason that Flying Miata includes that proportioning valve that we'll install. Uh, that'll allow me to control the bias and control how much braking goes to the rear. Okay. Beautiful line routing. Yeah! Our wheel shouldn't make any contact with the brake line. We obviously don't need to worry about the rear wheel steering. We do need to worry about suspension a little bit, though this looks like it's gonna be just great. So, cool. All right, so the game plan for the parking brake is to get the stock parking brake cables out, and then they'll be replaced by a set that work with the Willwoods. Cable will come up, and it'll kind of follow the original cable's routing. It'll get to the caliper, and then I have to install a little lever arm that'll just kind of squeeze. Sounds like it's not gonna be the best parking brake, but it'll technically be a parking brake. Man, I can't wait for the day when we build our own shop. And have loops and stuff? You know, it's not that I don't like working like this, but sure would be nice. Yeah, okay, so the cables are finally attached to the balance bar, which uh, was a bit of a battle, I will not lie. Uh, but battles won, they are on. Now the only thing is left to, to route them, mount them to the chassis, and then mount them to the e-brake. But I gotta tell you, I think I'm gonna do that in the morning, out of respect for my neighbors. <laughs> All right, we're back at it. Another beautiful day. Uh, we don't have that much left to do. Should be a pretty smooth day, I hope. Uh, of course, I'm here. I've had to take the rear calipers back off to install the parking brake arms. Uh, I guess I would have known that I should have done that first had I read the instructions. But it's times like these that I'm reminded of my old family motto, the old Job motto. If it's not done twice, it's not done right. So I guess we might as well just do it again and then things will be okay. All right, so our parking brake cable is completely hung and our parking brake's installed into the caliper. It's basically just two arms and this cable, when you pull the handle, pulls these two arms together and clamps the pads down on the rotor, you know, to stop it from spinning. Uh, so, should be pretty simple, should work okay. The big question is whether or not this is all gonna fit under the wheel. Oh yeah, baby, it's close, but we're gonna be just fine. Now we just need to go do the same thing to the other side. All right, so yesterday to help me get the parking brake installed, I loosened the adjustment here at the handbrake. There's just a nut with a slot in the top that you tighten or loosen, depending whether you want to tighten or loosen the cable to the e-brake. 
Not bad, we'll call that an adjustment for now. We might need to fine tune it once we get the car back on the ground, but for now that's good. So that's gonna wrap up the rears. We can put the wheels back on. And then let's go do that proportioning valve, then bleed this thing and go drive it. So by installing this valve, I'll be able to control how much power goes to the rear brakes and I'll be able to make them do a lot more work, which should help the Miata slow down a little bit quicker. So this right here is our stock distribution block, goes from the master cylinder to the front and rear brakes. Uh, so we're gonna be replacing that. This is the front line, which will be replaced with just a straight through. And then over here, we'll replace the pass through to the rear with this proportioning valve so we can dial in uh, how much power the rear gets in terms of braking. Okay, now that's in there nice and tight. Hopefully we don't have any leaks. We will have to check, but uh, now we should be good to fill this thing up with fluid and start bleeding it. Exciting times. Now when you do bleed brakes, you usually wanna start at the corner farthest away from the car. So we'll be starting at the passenger rear. Okay, here's an interesting part about these. These calipers have uh, inboard and outboard calipers, so you've got them on both sides. So if you've got something like that going on, you're gonna wanna bleed the inboard first and then the outboard, closest to the master and then furthest. So uh, you're gonna go ahead and put your line on your bleeder, like so. Then your wrench on your bleeder. And then have whoever's in the driver's seat Press the brake pedal a few times, three times, five times, eight times, put some pressure into the system and then hold the pedal down. And then he'll tell you that he's holding the pedal down like Eddie tells me. And then when the pedal's being held down, you crack the bleeder and let that pressure and air out. And you do that enough times until you're only getting fluid out, no air. And then move on. Keep going until you're done. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the install of our sick new Flying Miata big brake kit on the Miata. So now we got to put the wheels back on, get it on the ground, take it for a test drive, make sure this thing actually stops itself. And then once it does, we'll bed these pads in. And that's it, baby. Then we're home free. All right, the good news is the brakes stop us from a slight roll. That's the first thing you're always going to want to check. You know, make sure they work at least this much. And that e-brake feels pretty decent. Let's see if it'll stop us from rolling. Almost. Yay, we stopped. All right, enough. Can we go drive? Let's go drive. All right, so the plan right now is to get out, drive around, and get the brake pads warm, get them just nice and warm, then get them good and hot, and then cool them down. We got to bake them in. We got to give them that nice heat cycle to get them uh, good for a long life of service. It's also important when you get them good and hot, once you park the car, if they're still hot, don't put your e-brake on. Don't make the pads touch the rotors because then they can, uh, they can warp your rotors. See, so you want to go just until you hit ABS or lockup. You don't want to be locking up your brakes on brake bedding. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, they're feeling great. Smelling good too. Woo! People are like, what in the hell is this boy doing? If you're not happy with the way your brake pedal feels and you want it to feel better and you, you even want a little better stopping power, yeah, a big brake kit can do that for sure. But the point that I'm making is that you don't need to go with a big brake kit to get those things. You can get great pedal feel and great stopping power just out of doing a good pair of pads and rotors, a good set of stainless brake lines, and some good brake fluid. If you do those things, your brakes will feel better. Now, if you're still not happy enough with how they feel, and if you're still overheating them, then yes, a big brake kit is worth it. Then that is the road you need to go down, like the one I just went down. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about big brakes. Let's have a conversation about it. In the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram at Zach Job, follow Donut at Donut Media, and I'll see you guys next week.